let's talk about supplements of calcium for osteoporosis and osteopenia. I already have on my channel the video on the topic, what is osteoporosis and how to treat it. This only about calcium. It's Dr. Veronica with Crazy Healthy Ideas, what you can do to stay healthy. And special thanks to Amy. She is the nurse and she asked me a question. What do I recommend in my practice as a calcium magnesium supplement for osteoporosis? And the answer is the best source of calcium is food. I looked into several foods and let me tell you what I like or don't like about those foods. Number one, tofu made with calcium sulfate. Tofu is a soy. Do not like it. A lot of soy in America is genetically modified. The same could be said about soy milk, genetically modified. Number three, juices. Don't like it at all. Besides having a lot of calcium, tons of sugar that you do not want, will be converted in the, into the fat and also sugar will decrease absorption of calcium. Soybeans and soy nuts also genetically modified. Number five, dairy. I am okay with dairy product if you don't have any problems. Half and half or piece of cheese with your, with your wine through the day, it's okay. But number six is my favorite. All vegetables, bok choy, broccoli, colors, Chinese cabbage, mustard greens, and okra. Here are my favorite sources of calcium sub, uh, in the food. Alaskan pink salmon. Make sure that it did not come from Fukushima. Also, when you are going to eat it, make sure that you mash bones with, um, with your salmon because bones, that's what exactly calcium is. Seaweeds, absolutely love it. Again, make sure that they did not come from Japan. Handful of almonds through the day. I am absolutely love it. Almond milk will do the job too. If you decide and go to take a supplement of calcium, there are a few rules here. You must follow these rules. Number one, do not even think to take antiacids. They are full of coloring agents. They are carcinogenic. Also, often antiacids have aluminum in them. Absolutely do not like them. Number two, when you take supplements, make sure that there is calcium and magnesium together in the supplement. And I will explain in a minute why. Number three, do not take calcium supplements if you don't do weight bearing exercise. I will go into great details about that in a minute. When you look at the label of the supplement that you're planning to take, make sure that calcium in several different forms. It has carbonate, citrate, gluconate, and lactate. Calcium have to be with magnesium and the ratio is two parts of calcium and one part of magnesium. 1,000 milligrams of calcium is a good dose. Then you have to, the pill have to have 500 milligrams of magnesium. Make sure that it does not have strontium. I will explain in the minute why. I do not care about vitamin K in the supplement. The best source of vitamin K is green uh, vegetables. If you are healthy, you probably get enough of vitamin K from your food. Don't waste your money on vitamin K. Vitamin D, do not waste your money on vitamin D in a, in a combo of CalMag and vitamin D. Usually, there is not enough, and I will explain later why. So now let's go to the blackboard, and I will explain important topics. I already pre-draw for you our digestive tract. So here is a mouse with the teeth and we eat calcium rich food or you decide to take a supplement and it goes into your mouth through the digestive tract and get absorbed into the bloodstream. By definition, and by the way, this is the bone. By definition, osteoporosis and osteopenia, calcium starts to leach out of the bone into the bloodstream. 
concentration of calcium in the bloodstream is constant. It's around 10. So when you take a supplement and uh, you have already osteoporosis, osteopenia, concentration of calcium in the bloodstream becomes very high, higher than 10. Body absolutely cannot tolerate it. It has to bring back into this normal. How it does it? That extra calcium goes right into the kidneys and you pee it out. And you are lucky if you did not form kidney stones. In order to push this calcium from the bloodstream that you just put into your mouth, into the bone, or in other ways to reverse osteoporosis and osteopenia, you have to do weight bearing exercise. Here is the bone and the muscles get attached into your bones. When you do weight bearing exercise, muscle becomes bigger and it becomes stronger. And it's attached right here. And in the place of attachment, it pull, it's pulling on the bone. And when it's pulling, the more it's pulling because it gets bigger, that's what is the signal. I am getting bigger. I am getting stronger. I need stronger support. That's what pushes the calcium from the bloodstream into the bone. As a result, osteoporosis gets reversed and also less calcium goes into the, uh, into the kidney and get excreted. Question number two, why I recommend to take cal -Mag together? When the concentration of calcium gets higher in the bloodstream because you just took the supplement of the calcium, that calcium will go into the muscle. Let's say it's a muscle of the leg or it's cardiac muscle. If it's muscle of the leg, what happened? Calcium goes inside and will cause contraction of the muscle. As a result, patient is presented at the appointment with complaining of muscle cramps. It means that disbalance of electrolytes right here in the bloodstream. It means that too much calcium coming out coming out into the into the bloodstream. What magnesium does, magnesium, it, besides being a muscle relaxant, it also sits right here inside the muscle or on the surface of muscle cell and controls how much calcium can go inside the cell. So that's the answer. To control how much calcium goes inside the cell, that's why you have to take both calcium and magnesium together. Question number three, why no strontium with calcium? On the brush border mucosa of digestive tract, we have receptors. Both calcium and strontium go into the bloodstream through the same receptor. So when you have calcium and strontium coming through the, so through the same receptor, they are basically compete for the seed in this receptor, who will go and who will not. And some you know, few will get lost as a result. So what happens, you are losing calcium. So you're putting it here, and at the same time, it cannot go inside, it goes out here. So no strontium um, with the calcium. Also vitamin D sits here and facilitates the calcium absorption and vitamin D also sits right here on the surface of the bone and facilitates absorption of the calcium. Now let's go back and the final word I, I want to say. So you understand, number one, make sure that you do weight bearing exercise, otherwise you will form a kidney stones. Number, number two, if you have any digestion problems, issues such as uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, diarrhea, constipation, any inflammation will make calcium less absorbable. So as a, as a suggestion, I recommend to my patients with GI issues to take liquid calcium and magnesium. Also, my all the patients take liquid calcium and magnesium because I see it's my personal experience in my practice that all the people have less digestive power so liquid get absorbed much easier. Vitamin D is essential for absorption of calcium. Usually CalMax supplements will have four or 800 IUs of vitamin D. 
may not be enough. Do the laboratory work. See how much vitamin D you have in the bloodstream. Take extra thousand, two, three thousand. Sometimes patients in my practice take five thousand I use of vitamin D per day to make sure that they are able to absorb calcium. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much. Please ask me a question right here, and I would answer all your questions. Gladly subscribe. It's Dr. Veronica. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye, guys.